This whole trend is interesting to me because usually what happens with plastic surgery trends is that they start out with celebrities quietly and then influencers start getting them in mass and that's where the discussion really comes from. But it seems to have happened opposite this time around. That's it. That's my intro. Hey, I'm Amanda. You're watching Small Entertainment. And today we are talking about buckle fat removal and the social media trendification of plastic surgery. Now, this is not a new trend. This is not even a new procedure. Buckle fat removal is not new. The rise of the discussion around it has become very prevalent, especially on TikTok and in media discussions. And I think it's because more celebrities seemingly have gotten the procedure done. First and foremost, I am not anti-plastic surgery. I am not anti-aesthetics uh, procedures. Uh, I have had two done. Can you tell? Back in August, I had a little bit of filler and PRF done the first round, and that was done in my under eye area. And back in November, I had my second round of PRF done. Can you tell? Probably not. That's kind of the point, um, because for me, I'm comfortable with how I look. There's little things that I want to tweak, like my under eye hollows. I would like to make them look less obvious. I'm 25. I feel like it ages me. I feel like it reminds me of, you know, the trauma and sleep issues that I have and all of that. And I just don't like it. I've also thought about getting a little bit of filler in my upper lip because I don't like when I smile how my top lip disappears. And that's just how I feel about my face. I don't want to look like any particular person. And I think that that is kind of the goal with social media these days. It's like, oh, I want lips like so-and-so, or I want my nose to look like this. My whole thing with uh, plastic surgery and procedures in general is that you should be okay with maybe not getting it done. Like, could I live the rest of my life with the face that I have? Yes. I have been able to build this platform on my face and the fact that I'm sometimes funny <laughs> and a little unhinged. I could live the rest of my life with my face like this. However, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with having insecurities that you kind of want to tweak a little bit. I don't think anyone needs it. If you would like plastic surgery, just know why you want it. I don't want it because I think that fuller lips are in fashion right now. I want it because I talk a lot, I smile a lot, and a lot of people look at my mouth, and I don't like that when I'm wearing lipstick, it gets all over my gums and my teeth, okay? I don't like it. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything wrong with having those opinions. I'm very comfortable with how I look. I think I'm a very hot person. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to tweak little things, but I don't think that it's necessarily healthy to go into a consultation because you saw a Instagram account with a new procedure because you think that that's the next popular thing or that that's what's going to make you famous if you get this lip filler done or your nose looks like this or anything like that. My whole issue with the Instagram face, we as humans are individuals. We're not all meant to look the same. I'm not religious. If anything, I'm agnostic, borderline atheist. Okay. I'm not even approaching this from a religious place. Like God built us in his image or whatever. It's how God built you into ruining what God made. I don't even think of it like that way. I just don't think we're all meant to look the same. It's like the, uh, the TikTok belief and the social media belief that I've been seeing around a lot where, uh, we're not meant to see this many beautiful people in our lifetimes. And it's really messing with our perception of like what we are kind of allowed to look at that we are owed hot people to look at or something weird like that. I don't know. I just think that the growing normality and the uh, destigmatization of having procedures done in one hand is a good thing because I the last thing I want is for these influencers and these celebrities who have these large followings and these big fan bases of impressional young people, not just young women, but young people in general. I don't think it's good that they're hiding that there's procedures that have been done. It's like if you're going to get it done, be honest with yourself about why you're getting it done. But also if you have a platform, be honest about getting it done. I'm sure there are people who are going to have a problem with it because I like natural beauty and therefore um, you think that this person who has definitely had a bunch of work done is a natural beauty because you saw her without makeup one time. The whole natural beauty argument of this whole thing as well is kind of interesting to me because uh, so many people get work done, but they're still considered natural beauties because they don't have the Instagram face. Like that's not the work that they wanted done. Sure, there are some of you who still think that I'm entirely natural and that's okay, but like, it's just, no, you know? I know this is kind of towing the line of like, 
talking about natural beauty and all of that. I've had braces. I've been on Accutane. I dye my hair dark. There are changes that I've made to my appearance because I wanted to make them. And there's plenty of people who do things like that, but we don't really consider those aesthetics procedures all that often. A lot of your favorite influencers are, you know, a lot of your favorite actors have probably had a lot of work done. If they're 62 and still look 32, they've probably had some Botox. Botox is very common now. Though I personally am of the belief that you should not every procedure should be done when you're young. I don't think you need preventative Botox before you do X, Y, and Z, you know? I, I think that SPF does a world of wonders. Frankly, I have to find some photos. Honestly, when I started religiously using sunscreen, it like rewound the clock on my skin, no joke. Pre-Accutane, I barely use sunscreen and I thought my acne was aging me. I think it was just the lack of sunscreen, honestly. I think it was, because I look way younger now than I did a couple of years ago. <laughs> so should we just talk? I'm just gonna pull up a couple of different uh, breakdowns of these uh, procedures so I can explain them to you. Buckle fat, it's my understanding, it's this kind of area of skin below the cheekbone, but above the jaw. It's like this pocket. It's literally the cheek area, okay? This whole pocket is your buckle fat. I think I have a pretty slim face. I just kind of have a kind of rounded jaw, in my opinion. I don't really have a sharp jawline or anything. It's like my jawline creases way back here, you know? Um, I have a, a slightly weaker chin and all of that. So this kind of seems to me like the response to jawline filler, you know, because there's a lot of people who have had jawline filler. A couple of years ago, jawline filler was very popular. Everyone was talking about jawlines. Very prominent jawlines were a big deal for men and for women. Jawline filler became very popular, but a lot of people just started looking very handsome Squidward, for lack of a better word. You were building on what was already there. And so a lot of people just kind of started looking very boxy, for lack of a better phrase. And I'm not using examples of this, for a reason, because I'm not trying to shame anyone who has had these procedures done. I'm just talking about some of the ramifications of these trends and how these trends then shift into other trends like buckle fat removal. For some people uh, have really good results with filler, okay, for jawline specifically, or for their chins and all of that to kind of round out their faces or give their jaw more shape. But for some people, it just wasn't working out well, or it looked square, but not square. What's the word? Little bobble heady? I don't know. I'm trying to think of the proper way to describe this because I'm not using images. <laughs> You're building on what's already there. And if you already have a lot of volume in your face, then adding more filler on top of that volume to kind of just add more angles, it just kind of looks a little wonky for lack of a better word. And the buccal fat, Buckle fat, not buccal. Buckle fat removal is kind of the way to kind of define your jawline and carve out your facial features and highlight in your cheekbones without getting filler. Because, and I, I, I am personally someone, I will stand by this. I don't think that you should get cheek filler until you're at least 25 or older because your face is still changing. Personally think that the buckle fat removal trend is a response to overfilled faces. I don't want to keep getting cheek filler and chin filler and whatever else filled. So let's just take out the fat pads in my cheeks because then I'm kind of already working with what we have and we're just kind of getting rid of the stilts and we're just showing the foundation of my face. What you end up getting is this more gaunt look. And we're seeing this in, I hate saying this, but um, unfortunately, the trend of female bodies and body types, we are now swinging, seeing swing in the opposite direction of the BBL era that we have been seeing. And also, side note, I'm sure there's someone here who has it. I think BBLs are incredibly unsafe. I don't think anyone should be getting them whether it's in another country, here in the US, or wherever. I don't think they are a safe procedure at this point in time. Though we were seeing the trend of much fuller figures in both in influencing and in media, we are now seeing kind of a switch back to the heroin chic look of the 90s and this much thinner, gaunt looking shape and size of just bodies in general and the Buckle fat removal is also another indication of that. There was a great video that I found from TikTok that I want to point out this user. It's from the TikTok account Pretty Critical. I have an unpopular buckle fat removal opinion that I don't think will win me any friends on TikTok, but it needs to be said. I understand all the criticisms around like 
feeling pressured by society to you know literally cut yourself open and change the way you look what's missing from this conversation is a critique of the way that people are talking about these celebrities who are almost exclusively women i'm actually quoted in this daily beast article talking about it saying it's not even attractive like you look so old it jumped from being a critique of plastic surgery to being a critique of individual people's looks. Specifically how the response on TikTok and the response to people getting the buckle fat removal um, is kind of making them look older and aging them and making them look worse. And that the discussion was not around like, you know, being critical of plastic surgery. It was being critical of people's looks, basically body shaming them for how they looked and like age shaming them in a sense too, which is crazy. Again, I worry about this this because I, I, I've seen this being discussed from a, quite a few uh, influencers for about two or years now, I would say, specifically on TikTok. And then there's a couple of influencers that I've seen on Instagram as well, where I'm like, I think you may have had this done, but you know, they're not going to say it. So it's whatever. But what really brought this into like the discussion and the trend discussion was uh, celebrities getting it, which usually I think it happens vice versa, but it seemed like a lot of influencers were getting this, whether publicly or quietly, and it was just kind of not really discussed all that often. It was just like, okay, yeah, there's a thing where you can remove the fat pads from your cheeks, you know? And then now it's, now that these more, I guess what you could classify as conventionally beautiful uh, actresses and celebrities, that that's the only thing I can think of of why people are up in arms about this, is why people are discussing this more, you know? Because like the uh, so many of these, mm, so many influencers are trying to get to the level of celebrity that these actresses and models and the like are. Some of them, not all of them, some of them are trying to, you know, get to that ideal or surpass that ideal. And so they, the celebrities who are already considered to be the ideal look, then changing themselves to do these procedures that influencers are already doing. I think in some people's minds, it's cheapening these celebrities to them because that's the only thing I can think of of why people are like this up in arms about this. One comparison that I'm looking at right now is interesting. I'm sure some of you would notice it, but this one, uh, there's at least one person who also is jawline filler with the buckle fat removal here. Thin brows are back in style as well. And <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> that one, I don't know how I feel about. I think also the thing here too is some of these celebrities that are getting the buckle fat removal done they're not people who necessarily needed it done not that anyone needs it done but there are people who like it some of like this one celebrity i'm looking at right now had a similar face structure to me i don't think that i have like big cheeks you know and so if i were to get it done i would probably look very sick if i were to get buckle fat removal done because i would just look incredibly gaunt way more than i already do 90 percent of the time it's interesting to me that this is what they're choosing to have done i'm really trying to understand why this is happening i can understand why some celebrities may be wanting to look older for getting older roles or being taken more seriously or whatever, why they would decide, okay, I need to get rid of my baby face and have my little chipmunk cheeks or angel face features, whatever it's called now, kind of removed so that I can look older, so I can be taken more seriously in bigger roles and all of that. But only one of the people that I've seen who has gotten this done, I would consider someone who got famous for playing a teenager and kind of had like a younger looking face. They talk about preventative measures, but they don't talk about how your face changes as you age. Over time, as you age, you do start losing definition in your muscles, in your cheeks, in your lips, in your face, all of it. What's going to happen to your bone structure, to your muscle structure, if you're missing those fat pads from your cheeks, you know? Like, are you going to look more gaunt the older you get? Is it gonna be more drastic as you get older? Hi, Bubba's. He's sitting by the door because he wants to be let out. Please don't get buckle fat removal. You with your little cheeks. YouTuber canceled for giving her dog plastic surgery. <laughs> Has that happened? I feel like that's happened. Oh, they that's why there's no scarring. They go inside the mouth. Ow. God, they're going, they have her mouth like pried open and they're going inside. Ugh. I guess my whole point with this is don't think about right now. Don't think about trendy. Think about the fact that this is going to be your face for the rest of your life. And sure, you can change things. Botched is a show for a reason. You can get more filler. You can get fat injections. You can do all this other stuff, but like whatever helps you be comfortable with how you look, because that's 
you you know what makes you more comfortable in your skin and if having thinner cheeks is something that you think will make you more comfortable then really think on that and then move forward but don't just do it because you see x y and z and all these people or these magazines talking about how it's the hot new thing that's my opinion on this whole thing i'm not i know i'm I'm not trying to sway you one way or another really i just i really hope that everyone who is getting this is really thinking it through you're removing chunks of your 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 body you know like this is a a lob of fat that i am literally seeing being pulled out of this woman's mouth right now Eh, it's still there (laughs) look at before and afters not just immediate before and afters but like six months year afters look at potential complications because every procedure has complication risks uh look at someone who's had things done for years just really really think about it and be really certain with yourself of why you want to do something and you know if now is even the right time you may think you want this now but you're like you know what I'm going to wait a year or two. Let me make sure I still really want it. Let me think about it. Because I think that procedures will only get hopefully safer, better. I'm not going to sit here and be like, everyone is beautiful. Everyone should stay how they are. Because that's just a not a crock of shit. Because <laughs> you are beautiful in your own ways and all of that. But like, I know that that's not going to resonate with you because you've heard that before, you know. And if there's something that you want to change about yourself, then I think that you have the right to change that about yourself. I just hope that you're doing it for yourself and not because you think it'll help you get more likes on Instagram. You really think about the potential issues and all of that because everything, I don't want to scare myself for what could potentially go wrong. I think you need to, you know, I think you need to know the risks because they're a reality. Once a week, I see that there's a new video going around or a news story about how someone got flipping necrosis in their face because the injection went in the wrong, went to a vein or something. There's risks with everything. There is risk with getting in a car. There is risk with crossing a street. I think you should know the risks of that. Aesthetics, plastic surgery is a industry that's not going away and it's ever changing. You know, there's new developments, there's new techniques. I don't think there's anything wrong with waiting a couple of months. I have seen also kind of the opposite reaction to all of these celebrities and influencers getting this done, um, where other people are like, just for that out of spite, I'm gonna keep my chipmunk cheeks. I'm gonna eat even more or whatever and try and gain more cheeks in my, I'm gonna get more weight in my cheeks. I saw someone who said, I'm gonna keep my cheeks out of spite and I'm gonna make them even bigger so I can clap both of my cheeks (laughs) when I jump or something. It was funny. I'm phrasing it weird, but it was a very funny video. Again, I'm not trying to shame how these people who have had this done look. I'm really just wanting to kind of implore to you to really think about any procedure you get, whether it's adding to your face, subtracting from your face, you know, adding to your your chest, your butt, anything, and learn about the potential risks of it. Look at before and afters, not just before and afters from that one med spa or uh, la- uh, lab or whatever, lab, what, wherever it is you're looking at. Like, look at before and afters, not just from them, but from others, and look at before and afters over time. It's really easy to be sold on two images in a moment and not think about how that person could look now when that photo was taken six months ago, you know? So that's really going to be it. I'm going to leave it here. Have you seen all the buckle fat removal videos and photos? What do you think about the fact that uh, bodies are seen as trends and that facial features are seen as trends? What do you think about some people having their BBLs removed and the slimming down of a lot of uh, previously very curvy and voluptuous body types that were very popular and those those figures being slimmed down more for media. Now I talked about mine. Let's talk about yours. What are your opinions on plastic surgery and aesthetics in general? Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast as well. Shenan's podcast. Reminder, I have merch and shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like support me on Patreon, that'll be listed down below. Like, follow me on social media. That'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. I think if I were to get buckle fat removal, I would look like this. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris P, Crashed, China, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless, Incognito, Isaiah, Jacker Ray, James, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Sierra, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly Plastic, Tom, Quirty, Randy, Winter, Wendy, Williams, Andrews, Wink.